Ladies and gentlemen, Redis Geeks and Gigettes, welcome to Redis Day. Right. Uh, today I'm going to talk about scaling Redis PubSub. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how to use Redis PubSub to scale your own application, that we had enough talks of that. I'm going to talk about how to scale Redis PubSub itself. Uh, before I begin, let me introduce myself. As Itamar said, my name is Shachar Moore. Uh, I've been a developer for the past 10 years now, messing with Redis for about six years. And currently I work as a Lead Software Engineer, which is a nice name for a developer uh, at Pier 5. So, a few words about Pier 5. Uh, we're the world's largest peer-to-peer -peer based content delivery network. We help broadcasters scale their online video streaming, uh, but we do all of that without any servers. We're using the viewers themselves of the streams to help distribute the chunks of the videos amongst themselves. We use a technology that's called WebRTC that's embedded inside browsers which means that the users don't have to install any plugin or any software on their uh, device. All right, so what's on our agenda for today? I'm gonna to talk about what is Redis PubSub in case uh, you guys don't know, which I'm not sure you do. Uh, we're gonna see the architecture and benchmarks of both a single Redis node, PubSub in Redis cluster, and what we came up with our own custom solution, and hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A, but I'm not sure. So what is Redis PubSub? Uh, Redis PubSub is the Redis implementation of the publish subscribe messaging pattern. Um, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with. It means that the client can subscribe to some channels and the publisher can send messages to, to those channels. And if some subscriber is registered, is listening to those channels, they will get that message by, through Redis. Uh, before I move on, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, so raise your hand if you agree with the uh, if your, if your answer is yes, uh, who here uses Redis PubSub? Who here uses Redis PubSub within Redis cluster? Only one. So you guys are probably wrong. <coughs> All right, let's see why. So a single node. Uh, in order to fully understand what are the existing issues with Redis PubSub, and I'm sure Salvatore already knows because we talked about it in the last year's Redis day, uh, we, we, should, we need to see a step-by-step -step diagram of how it works. So we start with your single Redis node, your publisher and your subscriber, they are both connected to Redis. The subscriber subscribes to some channels, whether it's one or five or 10, it doesn't really matter. The publisher starts sending messages to Redis, which in turn forwards those messages to the subscriber. So far, so good. The problem is that at some point you're gonna have more and more publishers and more and more subscribers all going through that same Redis node, which will eventually blow up. It's gonna reach either its maximum CPU or its bandwidth. Now, depending on how many messages you're sending, this might just be sufficient for you, uh, but for our case, it wasn't. We needed much more than a single Redis node can handle. I've run uh, some benchmarks on Google Cloud. I used the two node, two CPU, uh, nodes for Redis and basically started throwing messages at it uh, and it reached about 100,000 messages per second, which is nice, it's a good start, but it wasn't enough. So what is the first thing that you think about when you want to scale Redis? Redis cluster, all right. So we know a single Redis node is limited and we need more throughput. We want to add more nodes in order to distribute our messages among them. We know, we all know that Redis cluster has its key space feature, which gives us the slot mechanism in order to decide which node to send, to send commands to. The only problem is that PubSub is not part of that key space. Where is Salvatore? I'm pointing at you, wherever you are. That's a problem. So what this means is that the publisher can send its messages to any node in the cluster. It doesn't have to calculate some slot or some hash or something like that and the subscriber can register to any node in the cluster. It doesn't have to register to a specific node. Let's see a step-by-step -step diagram of how that works as well. 
You have your Redis cluster, this, in this case a three node cluster. They are both connected to each other using the gossip channel. And you have your publisher and two subscribers in this case. The, the publisher is connected to all of the nodes in the cluster. It's using a round robin um, distribution in order to send messages, different messages to different nodes, which is good, which is exactly what we wanted. And the subscribers are registered to a single node in the cluster of their choosing. It's mo most of the time, it's just a random node. So the, the problem with sending messages to Redis cluster is that Redis must guarantee that the, that the message that is sent to a specific channel is transferred to all of the subscribers that are registered on that channel, regardless of which node they are connected to. Let's see how that works. Uh, the publisher starts sending a message to a specific node, in this time the, the node on the top left, which in turn forwards those messages, basically copies them the number of times there are, there are nodes in the cluster. If you remember in the first case, the, the, the Redis node directly forward the message to the subscriber. In this case, it's first transferring that message to all of the nodes in the cluster, which in turn forwards them to the subscriber. So now the same single message that we had is now duplicated two times, which basically creates much more load and those, the cluster will blow up as well. Again, I've ran some benchmarks. I, I ran a three node cluster, a four node cluster, and a five node cluster. The more nodes I added, the less overall throughput I got. Uh, the three node cluster was just about the same as a single Redis node, which means that the two additional nodes already did not add any more throughput. And the more nodes I added, the less overall messages I got. So we came back to the drawing board and thought, what are the goals that we need from our costume solution? First, it must support an ever-increasing number of messages and then from an ever-increasing number of clients. Now, I want to stop for a bit and talk about the term ever-increasing. We don't want to plan for something that can hold 1,000 or, one, or 10,000 or 100,000 messages per second. We want to, to plan for something that can hold an infinitely number of messages. The next goal was to be able to scale the number of servers up and down automatically. If you know Redis cluster, for example, does not support that at the moment. You have to run some migration steps, some reshard resharding, uh, which we didn't want in our solution. It should, it, another uh, goal that's inside this automatic scaling is we needed to be able to support uh, the default cloud providers auto-scaling solutions. So as soon as the CPU is above 70 or 80 percent, another node will come up and it will automatically join the cluster. Well, not really cluster, but we'll see soon what it is. And of course, we wanted to support all of the Redis pubs of features, multiple subscribers, channel patterns, etc. So we came up with our own solution. Um, this is another step-by-step -step diagram. I promise this is the last one. Our solution is split into two. We have the main pub sub section it currently contains only one node, and we have a service discovery. You can use whatever service discovery that you want, console or whatever. We used Redis as well. If you want to know how, we can talk about it later. So what happens is that now the publisher and subscribers are first connecting to the service discovery in order to find out which nodes exist at the moment. Once they find out, they connect to that single Redis node at the moment, subscribe to the channels and start sending messages just as the example of the single Redis node. But at some point, the CPU will come up and we will want another node in the cluster in order to distribute the messages. And what will happen is the node will connect to service discovery, register itself, which in turn tell the subscriber and the publisher about the new node. They will connect to it using separate connections. The, it's not part of a cluster. Those are all standalone servers and the publisher will start sending messages in a, in a round robin fashion, which means that each message is sent to a different node, which in turn forwards them to the subscriber. And another example, just for a quick demo. Uh, it's all happening automatically without any configuration change to the application or to the server or whatever. When, another, when a node wants, uh, needs to go down, whether because it's the CPU is now low and there's no traffic, it, it deregisters itself from the service discovery. The, publisher, the publishers stop sending messages to it. Then it waits a few seconds in order to make sure that all the, all the publishers 
had enough time to to stop sending messages and the subscriber is still connected to it in order to get those less messages. After a few seconds, the subscriber disconnects again and the node is shut down. What happens when, a new, when another publisher connects? It goes to the service discovery in order to find out the list of nodes, connects to them and starts sending messages, and the same thing happens for a subscriber. Subscriber connects to the service discovery and then to the all, all of the existing nodes, subscribes to all of the channels, to all of the nodes, which means that if, if the subscriber register, wants, to subs, wants to listen to channel number one, it will register two times, one for the first node and the second time for the second node. So if you have n nodes, it will basically create n connections and subscribe n times. Um, so we've run a, the, the same benchmark again. When running with one node, we achieved 100,000 messages per second, three nodes, 300,000 messages per second, and so on and so forth, basically a linear scale. 20 nodes were 2 million messages per second, and that's when I got uh, an alert from my cloud provider that I'm using too much money for the benchmarks, so I stopped. Um, we're hiring, obviously, uh, so like all the companies here. Uh, so if you like video streaming and making the world a better place for, vid for watching video, let me know. This is the view from our office. It's uh, Kikar Rabin, for those who uh, don't uh, see the picture. And that's it. Thank you.